What's going on, Print Fam? And welcome back to another Print Life video. Today, we're setting up print jobs. A two color print job, to be exact. After the intro. What are you doing? You sunbathing? Sun bathing. Good girl. That's Gigi's favorite spot. Behind the motorcycle, in the sun, chilling. Today we have a two color setup. And this one, we will be using our Rapid Reg template just to, you know, see how it works. This is our wide underbase. It's going on a 150S mesh. And for this gig, we're gonna be using uh, metallic gold from Total Link Solutions. This is some new stuff that they got. It's low cure. We're gonna give it a shot on this job and see what we think. Now this job that I'm setting up here is actually a reorder because the first one up. Actually, I'll go show you why here in a second. So let's go show you exactly what happened. And the reason I'm showing you guys this, I feel like there's a, a stigma within this industry uh, because of all of the heroes that post all their heroic successes uh, to never talk about the shit that goes wrong. This was a small order, should have been in and out quick, you know. The shirts were coming out of the dryer a little hotter than they should have been. And they were coming in and falling on themselves. And this is a particularly common with gold like shimmer inks or, or any of the metallic inks. Because they just kind of have a tackiness to them anyway. They were falling on themselves, it was a little too hot. And you can see how it stuck to itself here and here, so it folded over on itself. Now, to remedy this, there are two things you need to do. Number one, make sure that your, that your shirts are not coming out at a higher temperature than they need to. And with Plastisol jobs, that's usually 320 degrees. Don't really want to be exceeding that by too much. But the second fix, and most of you have probably seen this a thousand times, I used to have a fan right up here, uh, and we would blow it down on the out feed, which was fine, but took it to the next level, mounted it horizontally. Now it's blasting air down on the out feed cooling those suckers before they fall into the thing. Uh, and that should, again, I say should, stop that problem from ever happening again. Yeah, in this industry, can't count on nothing. So as soon as those screens dry, I'll actually start setting them up. Your screens have had a chance to dry. Today it's overcast, so I'm actually using the uh, exposure table to post exposure. In my experience, this step is particularly important when you're setting up screens to print with water-based inks. Not quite as important with Plastisol, but with water-based inks, definitely. Okay, I got a little too crazy on that one, but I'm also having to learn how uh, these micros work. I feel like I've gotten that one in. I'm gonna bring my first one back around and I'm just checking it. Now, 
see, as I bring it back, it's like, okay, now I'm just looking at it again and it's not perfect. But one of the habits you get into is not pushing down here, not pushing down here. When you're checking for placement, you really want to be pushing down straight down from like the middle. You can push near the registration marks too and from the back, but you're kind of constantly doing this. Because remember, when you do your print, you're not pulling down from here, you're pulling from the middle of the screen. So use downward pressure on the mesh when you're setting up. And I do have to make some, some slight adjustments. So that's what we're gonna do. This one back. Sometimes you're just taking it out of the gate and putting it back down just to make sure that nothing's shifted, you know what I mean? Sometimes as simple as lifting it out of the gate, putting it back in just to double check. Bring this one one more time. So this is pretty close. Eh, again, I don't fully trust this one. I am gonna just touch these again, man. Don't love it. Don't love it. Eh, see again, man, it's not. I'm having a hard time with this one getting it right where I want it. Maybe it might be the off contacts a little high too. Hmm. All right. Uh, it's it's close, but you can see it's not it's not dead nuts. Um, but I've sat here fussing with it for a minute, and I'm almost tempted to just like not perfect so this situation really is the printer's dilemma the registration is tight but it's not perfect this is where I think a lot of printers will go ah I'm pretty sure it's in they'll ink up they'll do it only to discover they have to make some micros right and I feel like if you just spend a little bit of extra time the first go around uh, you're much more likely to just nail it on the first setup so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on it my in registration name. Now before I start inking my screens or any of that kind of stuff, I'm gonna get my dryer on, I'm gonna get the temperature up, and then I'm gonna run a handful of shirts through it to make sure that my temps are correct. To double check that everything is cool, I'm gonna run a handful, about 12 shirts through the tunnel. All right. So. I'm glad I tested it because this thing is coming through the tunnel right now at 350, 340. It's fluctuating about 20 degrees, which is what it does. It's a piece of shit. It's coming out hot, man, especially towards the back over there. I dropped this from 350 to 325. I'm letting the tunnel cool. And then we'll take another reading. Hopefully it hasn't broken again. It was doing this earlier and no matter what we did, it was just shooting up really high into the 350, 370 degree mark. Hopefully it didn't break again. So when I dropped it 20 degrees, that made the, the temperature in this thing tank as well. So I had to raise it up to 10, or I had to, I had to raise it up 10 more degrees. Let's see what that does. I'm also concerned that this thing is a little bit inaccurate. So we're in that range. So we're good to go. I'll say this, I'm glad that I checked that because I could have ended up, you know, sending a bunch of shirts through too hot again and then they would have stuck together and we would be in the same place that we were a few days ago. I'm turning the fan on, which will help cool the shirts as they come out, so that they don't stick to themselves when they fall into the catch basket. Uh, next thing on the agenda is to ink up the screens, do our test print, uh, and then we'll be off to the races. So this ink is definitely good looking. They tried sending us a bunch of samples some time ago, uh, but it was in the middle of summer and they had basically cured. So shipping low cure inks is problematic. It's nice. Check on my palette distances to make sure that they are the same distance so that I'm printing the graphic in the same location every time. Reactivate all the palettes, or the adhesive on the palettes. This process is pretty straightforward. Set your tester down and you're just inking it up and running a print. I like to leave my registration marks open. Um, what we are looking for is just to make sure that uh, everything's in registration and that my flashes are correct. So right now my flash is set at three and we're doing a six second flash. Now I've just done my print flash print 
but I'm allowing ample cooldown time between flashes. And here's why. Especially when you're in the middle of the setup, your palette is, because you're working off of one and you're applying heat to it over and over again rapidly, it's gonna get extremely hot. So you need to allow that thing to cool down. If you don't, when you go to print your Plastisol, uh, everything will be too hot and it will, it will literally cure the ink into the openings of the mesh. You don't want that. It'll ruin your setup, it'll ruin your day, it'll make you wanna give up on the beautiful art that is screen printing. So, allow cool down time. This thing is nice and cool. It's got a decent flash to it, so we're gonna go ahead and run our first pass with our gold, see if we're in registration. God, I hope we're in registration. One more. And we'll see what it looks like. Uh, looks great. I'm going to remove my rapid reg here. I gotta do my adhesive activation really quickly. Before I start production, I'm going through and preheating all my pallets, making sure they're up to temperature, about 130 degrees. I'm such a sick that I forgot to tape the screens because I'm used to liquid tape, but this screen does not have liquid tape on it, uh, which was a nightmare. Dude, yeah, that gold looks good, dude. Spending a little bit of extra time on registration in the beginning pays off in the end because I didn't have to do any adjustments. It's clean. Uh, I was not aware of this. I thought that I fixed it. I replaced the, um, I forget what they're called. It's a mercury, some kind of mercury based solenoid. I replaced it and I thought everything was working good, but this thing, the temperature on it is shooting to the moon and then dropping and it's shooting to the moon and then dropping. It's fluctuating like 50 degrees. So it was just up to 370. Now it's dropped to 300. <sighs> I don't know, man. I think our dryer is fucking toast. So I just came down to check what was passing through it and check this out. So these are 50-50s and you can, I can feel it, first of all. Again, man, I checked that. It was at 320 degrees. Everything was coming out good. I ran a couple of them through and they looked good. But then all of a sudden it shot to the moon. It went up to like 360 and it, it literally, I mean, these are scorched. They're all scorched. I'm trying to think how to handle this. Here's what's gonna have to happen. I'm gonna, um, we may have to cure this through the smaller dryer or something. Uh, but either way, I want to. I guess I want to pull a silver lining out of this. So I did have, I was able to put some time in setting up a two-color job on this press, messing with it. Here's here are the things that I want to say first off about the press. The micro registrations are tits, man. All you got to do when you're using this particular press is just barely loosen them. So you have them tight, you just barely back them off. Uh, to where there's still a lot of downward tension on it and you can easily move the micros, get the thing where you want it and just, it's like a quarter turn back to tight, good to go. The micros are so minute that you can just get those little micro movements that you need to get everything in registration. Everything over here, very high level, very professional shit. Anatol makes, from what I can tell so far, the best manual press that you can get your hands on. Just look at it, look at the pallet arms. Look at the pallet arms, dude. Look at the registration gates. Look at the micros, look at how everything works. It's the best manual press you can get. Killing it over here. Mm, this dryer is a problem. I guarantee you I checked the temperature right now and it's fine. I, I bet you, dude. I, 
So it went up to like 370 and now it's down to under 200. Oh, fuck, man. I don't know. I don't know. Ah. Anyway, guys, today started out good, but it ended it up with a problem. Uh, hopefully, I can get it taken care of in the next couple of days. Either way, you learned something. I was able to get my hands on the Anatol and mess with the micros and really figure that thing out. And it was all good, and I'm really happy to have that thing. Now, I just got to get this hunk of junk sorted out. Uh, in the meantime, take care of yourself, Print Fam. Peace out.